Throughout the Western world, early 20th century scholars, artists, and writers unleashed anti-modern ideas and images that portrayed a rural underclass they called the folk. Brown County, Indiana is but one site where they believe pioneer practices persisted, unspoiled by modernity. It was here that woodblock artist Gustav Bauman and other culture workers produced their images of an idyllic community where the folk dwelled in log houses, continued old crafts, and lived an idealized existence without the ills of modern urban life. While Bauman stayed here only seven years, the visual motifs and themes he crystallized in his art helped cultivate an expectation where outsiders envisioned Brown County as a pre-modern community, a remnant of Hoosier folk culture. This presentation traces how the nostalgic life waves carved into Bauman's wood blocks initiated a cultural trajectory that continues to shape the social and economic life of this community. Bauman pulled prints of log cabins and rolling hills in Indiana long before he carved wood blocks of Pueblo life and colorful canyons in New Mexico. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In 1891, when Bauman was just 10 years old, he and his family moved from Madenburg, Germany, to Chicago. It was just 20 years after the Great Fire. The artist grew up in an emerging modern city that contrasted from his memories of the old world. As a teen, he apprenticed as an engraver and took evening classes at the Arts Institute. In 1905, Bauman returned to Germany to attend the Royal School of Arts and Crafts. There, he honed his skills, but was also introduced to ideas of folklore and folk art, which shaped his worldview and aesthetics. His art championed small village life and handwork and rejected big cities and mass production. When he got back to Chicago, Bauman did commercial engraving for a time, but in 1910 joined a fledgling art colony in Nashville, Indiana, and made Brown County his home. Before year's end, he had produced a series of small prints entitled In the Hills of Brown. Through this affordable series, he aimed to make his art available to all. However, this exhibit announcement reveals another mission for his art. The series was Bauman's effort to convey a Hoosier spirit, not just visual descriptions of the county, but nostalgic prescriptions for Hoosier identity, shaped by the anti-modern concerns of the time. In addition to prints of autumn landscapes, Bauman pressed idealized scenes of everyday life, like people at work and small-town gatherings. He printed the series on Alonzo Allison's Franklin Press that was primarily used to publish the local newspaper. Having just left commercial printing in the city, Bauman was no doubt drawn to the subject of the small-town printer and his sons. The series features several prints like this one, which depict people making things with a keen attention to the creative process and cultural context. As in his print of the wagon shop in Nashville, which shows a wagoner at his bench, chisel and mallet in hand, while a child plays with a piece of wood and tools near the doorway. Through this image, Bauman posits the continuation of a vanishing trade at the dawn of an automobile age. Similarly, the series also includes a print of a rag rug weaver, which shows a woman weaving while children watch with interest from the window. Like the wagon maker print, this image implies the generational exchange of local handicrafts. Tradition. Years later, photojournalist Frank Hohenberger published this image of Iva Lucas at her loom. Weaving became a recurring motif in the representation of Brown County folk culture. Today, locally made rag rugs remain a popular tourist craft. Bauman was also drawn to the slow-paced life in Nashville, as seen in this print from the series. A period journalist described its subject as a, a group of men to whom time means little seated in front of a hardware store in the village, deep in discussion. The trope of old men swapping stories was often deployed as proof of the county's slow-paced lifestyle. A well-known example is Hohenberger's Liar's Bench, an image that holds iconic status in the community and has been emblazoned on a variety of tourist wares. 
In addition to romanticized images of idleness, Bauman and other artists often presented the county as a remote and unspoiled place. In 1914, an Indianapolis Star writer noted that while a visit to the county would have been unheard of a few years earlier, by then it was a fashionable stunt. What had changed? For sure there was better transportation, but also anti-modern images like Bauman's had piqued urban interest. While in 1910 it may have been thought of as an isolated, today Brown County boasts a thriving hundred-year tradition of tourism. Anti-modern ideas gave rise to an art colony, which attracted tourists to see the picturesque landscapes and old-time practices. Tourism became the defining industry for the community, around which an infrastructure of public lands, gift shops, and low-paying service jobs have accumulated. Today, many view the county as still hemmed in by its rurality and poverty, but I contend that the repeated representations of local life that rippled out from the work of artists like Gustav Bauman have helped foreclose other economic options for many in the county. Either way, the county is still often conceived by tourists as a place that is quaint, simple, and slow-paced, where people make crafts. Folklore should continue their study of the politics of cultural representation and the long-term impact of the anti-modern notion of the folk.